no, no, don't do that. Bye, Boaz. Back to me. There we go. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay, anyway, to matters at hand. Uh, the opening session of the General Assembly at the United Nations is underway. The leaders of the world address the United Nations. Usually it's the heads of state who are making the presentations. Occasionally it is the uh, Secretary of State or the Foreign Minister of the nation. Uh, President Bush today uh, made his seventh address to the United Nations. It was uh, billed by the White House as a less contentious address than uh, previous times when he came before the United Nations. There's no question but that this president has shown uh, less of an affinity for the United Nations than many of his predecessors, far less enamored with the United Nations than his immediate past predecessor, uh, President Clinton. Um, when he spoke to the United Nations today, uh, he did not talk about an axis of evil, but he talked about brutal regimes around the world. And some of those brutal regimes uh, were part of the axis of evil that he has uh, addressed before. Some of them were not. Uh, the uh, regimes that he calls brutal, he called brutal today, include Belarus, Syria, Iran, and North Korea. Wondering what you think about that, his call to action to the United Nations to do something about these, uh, about these regimes. Frankly, personally, I'm disappointed not for the United Nations attempts in the humanitarian field. I give high marks to those attempts. In fact, I know that uh, many people who dedicate their lives to helping others and use the United Nations as a vehicle to help other people have put themselves in harm's way and have uh, unfortunately been wounded or killed in action, it's, it's not unusual because they go into uh, the hotbeds of the world to try to bring help to the individuals there. Uh, but we look at the situation in Darfur, and, and, and we find that in Darfur, the United Nations has been pretty impotent. And uh, there's no question but genocide is occurring in Darfur. We, we saw what was going on in Rwanda. We saw that the United Nations was pretty impotent there. We look at the Middle East and we see that the United Nations is uh, pretty impotent there. Um, when Israel attacked Lebanon because of the actions of Hezbollah, it was a war between Israel and Hezbollah, but of course the Lebanese people suffered. The United Nations stepped in to broker a peace. The uh, Israelis agreed to the terms and withdrew, but Hezbollah did not return the Israeli soldiers did not stop the attacks on Israel and did not uh, give up their arms and stop meddling in the internal affairs of Lebanon as promised. So it seems to me that there's very little teeth behind the United Nations uh, when it comes to issues such as this. Uh, when we look at Iran, we see a situation where Iran continues to thumb its nose at the international community, uh, continues to develop nuclear weapons, uh, continues to violate the non-proliferation treaty, and yet the United Nations seems fairly well impotent when it, when, it, when it comes to that. On the other side of that, we have a president who, in my opinion, uh, has lost uh, the moral high ground because of the war in Iraq, and as a result of that, um, he's certainly not going to rally the United Nations by coming in and giving a locker room type uh, cheer to, to the troops to go out there and do what's right for humanity. I don't think people listen to him. Unfortunately, I think more people will be listening to that despotic demagogue Ahmadinejad when he addresses the UN this evening than those who paid any real attention to George Bush today. And just as I set this up a little bit further, uh, the president is not attending a UN summit on the climate at the United Nations this week. Instead, he's returning to Washington and he's convening a summit of his own so that he can push forward his agenda. Now, one could argue that this whole issue uh, about global warming really is a serious problem, or one could argue that people are 
embracing it for political purposes. I know that even the scientific community is divided on that score. But uh, is this not a slap in the face of the United Nations by the President of the United States, rather than remaining here in New York City and participating in that summit on the climate, he convenes his own. And uh, the President today also called for the United Nations to uphold its original charter pledge to stamp out hunger, disease, illiteracy, and other challenges to human liberty. Uh, we heard today from Action Aid, the International Anti-Poverty Agency, uh, Action Age is reacting uh, with criticism of the president for making those comments. Um, Action Age is, Age is, um, AIDS campaign director uh, says in a statement that President Bush, quoting here, is rightly giving priority to hunger as a global issue. Now the United States must put its money where its mouth is by ratifying the UN resolution on the right to food. Uh, frankly, I know nothing about that particular resolution to be able to comment myself on whether there is a good reason for the U.S. not to ratify, but we know that the U.S. has not uh, ratified the Kyoto Accords on, on the climate and on pollution. We also see, at the same time, China uh, probably polluting per capita the environment more so than any other nation in the world as it tries to emerge into a market economy. So there are a lot of issues, and there are, seems to be an increasing cry each year uh, by protesters who protest across the street from the United Nations during the uh, General Assembly for the United States to get out, just get out. And I don't know if that's the proper uh, course to take or not, but I will say that I, as a person who once covered the United Nations for CNN Radio, always found myself very frustrated. Uh, they talk in diplomatic ease. They don't speak directly to the people. Uh, frankly, one of the people who I found the most frustrating to cover at the United Nations of all was Hans Blix, who would not say definitively whether or not he felt Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction at the time that the United States led its coalition into Iraq, which we are now all criticizing. At the time, everybody thought that there were of mass destruction, and Hans Blix did not confirm nor deny it. He did say that he could humanitarian purposes, and where did all that money go? Between operatives of the United Nations and Saddam Hussein and, and, and his uh, cartel of uh, humanitarian aid that uh, they were supposed to for the sale of the oil that was permitted on the open market in spite of the sanctions. So I know it's an imperfect world, and I know not, nothing is a panacea to any of these horrific issues that are facing us. And I do believe it is important at this time when we are potentially on the precipice of uh, a conflagration in the Middle East, and at a time when there is a state sponsor of terrorism in the Middle East and elsewhere, in Europe, and probably here in the United States, that we should all be talking, I believe, in diplomacy. And I don't see a particular alternative to the United Nations, but please, can't we do better than what we have been doing thus far? Anyways, those are my observations on all this. I'd like to know what you have to think about that. Let's go to our first caller, Cassandra. She's in the UK and joining us from our affiliate ASI Online. Gosh, Gary, you, you covered so many subjects. I, I, I just don't know where to start. Uh, let's go to the root cause of what I see, I see as 